Hey there besties. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're continuing our recap of the manhwa, Betrayal of Dignity. If you're new to this series, check the description below for links to previous episodes. Lastly, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you enjoy the video, it really helps our channel grow. Thanks for tuning in. Let's get started. I cannot believe His Majesty remained firm in naming Johannes his heir until his final breath, Lord Weiss remarked, conversing with another count on his estate. Indeed, but Duke this actions puzzle me more, the second man responded. Why delay seizing the throne until after the national mourning? With Prince Johannes's madness already exposed in the Red Veil, the people have turned against him. Why hesitate? The Duchess is with child, Lord Weiss explained. If the Duke acts rashly and falters, it's not just his life at risk. If her safety is his concern, we could increase protection, the Count offered. Do you think I haven't suggested that? Weiss replied tense. And what was his response? Those without wives should keep their opinions to themselves. The Count paused, then added, But remember Weiss, this marriage was part of his grand plan to claim the throne. True, Weiss nodded. He even ordered Lady Alice, the Duchess's sister, be drawn into scandal, though she fled before it could unfold. I thought his choice of House Verdia was to keep the royal family's eyes off him, the Count mused. And to control the minds. He used Lady Isabella to play up his image as a womanizer, married the Duchess, and dodged royal scrutiny. Didn't his grace also mention discovering gold in Verdia during the war? The Count asked, not noticing the faint noise nearby. Lord Weiss started to speak but stopped, hearing something. Did you hear that? He asked, confused. It's probably just a cat, the Count said dismissively. Regardless, we must follow his orders for now, Weiss sighed as they moved on. Still, I can't help but worry, the Count muttered. Meanwhile, in a quiet corner, Gillis clasped his hand over his mouth, heart pounding. What on earth did I just overhear? He thought, his face pale with terror. Oh, how adorable. The color is so lovely. Margaret exclaimed, watching Chloe knit a tiny pair of baby socks. I chose something neutral since we don't yet know if it's a boy or girl, Chloe replied, her attention still focused on her knitting. His lordship will be overjoyed, no matter the gender. It's your first child, after all. Margaret said cheerfully. Do you really think so? Chloe asked, her hand steady, but her mind elsewhere. I'm not so sure she thought to herself, recalling a conversation with the Duke. This will be your first and final pregnancy, Chloe, Duke Damien had told her with a grave expression. Pardon, Chloe had asked, sitting on the bed, sadness clouding her gaze. But if I don't bear you a son, you'll have no heir to succeed you. Chloe. He had moved to sit beside her, his voice stern. I don't like to repeat myself. One child? Does that mean he's confident it will be a boy? Chloe wondered, her mind drifting back to the present, her fingers moving methodically over the soft yarn. When do you think his lordship will return from Swain? It's been a fortnight since he left, Margaret asked, breaking the silence. It's a busy time, Chloe replied, just as a knock interrupted them. Come in, she said. My lady, a visitor has arrived, the butler said, stepping in. It is Lord Chelsea, house this lawyer. Chloe's brow furrowed as she looked at the papers the lawyer presented. Are you certain His Grace personally dictated these words? She asked, skimming the document. Yes, my lady. I transcribed every word faithfully, without omission, Lord Chelsea affirmed. Chloe's eyes lingered on the will. He intends to bestow the name Thys and the title of Duke upon our firstborn, regardless of gender? That's not permissible under current law, she said. His Grace has always opposed Swanton's inheritance laws. And as your ladyship knows, he keeps his word, Lord Chelsea replied. I know, Chloe said quietly, gripping the paper as her face flushed. He would break the law if it meant ensuring our child doesn't lose anything. Lord Chelsea then placed a letter and a necklace on the table. His Grace also asked me to deliver this to you. Chloe unfolded the letter. To my dear Duchess Chloe Vaughan Thys, I would like you to begin making preparations to come to Swain. I had planned to wait until our child's birth next spring, but my yearning for you surpasses my patience. Hoping to see you as soon as possible, Damien. My lady, 
you've been positively beaming ever since his lordship's letter arrived, Margaret remarked during tea, placing the tray down with a smile. Is that so? Chloe asked, her voice calm, though her cheeks flushed slightly. Yes, you seem more at ease than ever before, Margaret observed. I was worried he didn't want the child, but it seems my fears were for nothing, Chloe thought, feeling some relief. My lady, if you go to Castle Rose, I would accompany you, wouldn't I? Margaret asked excitedly. Of course, Margaret, Chloe reassured her. I've never been outside this before. I'll finally get to see theater performances. Margaret exclaimed, her eyes bright as she clasped her hands in joy. Your dream is to be an actress, isn't it? You could even audition in Swain if you wish, Chloe said with a soft chuckle, picking up her teacup. Ah, that reminds me. Lily, the kitchen maid, went to visit her family in Swain and spotted Gillis at a store, Margaret said suddenly, causing Chloe to freeze for a moment. Gillis, in Swain? Chloe asked, surprised. Yes, he was dressed as a monk, but Lily was sure it was him. He told her he's working at a monastery run by Count Weiss's mother, Margaret added. Weiss? Count Weiss is Damien's closest confidant. Damien wouldn't have arranged this, and Gillis wouldn't willingly take a job connected to house this. What could have led to this? Chloe wondered. In any case, we'll see him once we're in Swain, Margaret said cheerfully. I never got to thank him or apologize. If I see him in Swain, I'll make sure to say everything I didn't before, Chloe thought to herself. My lady, please excuse me. I need to take these to the study, Margaret said, gathering some papers. Do you mean those documents? Chloe asked. Yes, the steward asked me to sort them. I've still got a lot to do, including cleaning up the study, Margaret explained. I can take them to his grace's study for you, Chloe offered. Pardon? My lady, you shouldn't overexert yourself, especially in your condition, Margaret said, looking worried. It's all right. This is the least I can do to help my husband, Chloe replied with a smile. In Duke Damien's office, Chloe carefully placed the documents on his desk her fingers brushing the papers as she thought. Perhaps Damien did have a hand in securing Gillis's job. Gillis was always there for me, and Damien is the kind of man who repays loyalty. He can be surprisingly loving. Her gaze drifted to a large portrait of the Duke. Limping slightly, Chloe walked over to it, her hand gently tracing the painting surface. Damien, I miss you very much too, Chloe whispered as her eyes lingered on his portrait. Something caught her attention, a small object dangling below the frame. What is that? She wondered, reaching for it. As she tugged gently, a hidden compartment opened, revealing a secret safe. A secret safe? Chloe murmured, her curiosity piqued. She cautiously opened it, revealing piles of documents inside. Damien doesn't seem like the type to hide things. She thought, hesitating before deciding to take a look. Maybe just a peek she told herself, pulling out a few papers. Flipping through, she realized they were all related to his business dealings. What could have made him conceal these? She wondered. But as she scanned further, she froze upon seeing a map of Verdia. Why Verdia? she wondered, her fingers trembling as she unfolded a letter attached to the map. The contents left her stunned. Following an examination of the sample sent by Your Grace, it has been determined that the mineral unearthed along with the sand is gold. It is highly likely that its source is a mine in the Verdier estate. Viscount Verdier is on the verge of bankruptcy. If his second daughter fails to secure a suitable match, Castle Verdier will be lost due to insurmountable debts. This letter. It's from three years ago, Chloe whispered in disbelief, her heart pounding as she continued to read. In response to your inquiry regarding his eldest daughter, she is skilled in medicine and excels in managing the servants. She has long given up on marriage due to her condition. Chloe's hand fell limp, the papers slipping through her fingers. He knew about me all along? She thought, tears brimming in her eyes. My love, came a familiar voice, breaking her trance. Chloe turned to see Duke Damien standing at the doorway, his face damp, droplets of rain still clinging to his hair. I took the last train because I couldn't stand being away from you any longer, he said softly, his voice gentle as he noticed the tears streaking down her face. His eyes flicked to the documents scattered around her. If you have questions, I will answer them all, Damien said, stepping toward her, his gaze unwavering. 
It continued to rain outside as the room remained still. I don't wish to think about anything right now, Chloe said softly. Chloe, I told you to ask me questions. Ask me what those documents mean and why I did it, Duke Damien said, stepping closer. Chloe kept her gaze on the floor, silent. Chloe, don't you want to know the truth? He asked calmly. She bit her lip as tears began to fall. Since you insist, I'll ask. Was the murder of the Marquise part of your plan? She asked. I didn't kill her, he replied, still composed. Then, were you the one who framed me? Chloe asked, her voice trembling. Yes. I only did it because I love you. I wanted your heart, so I took it. Resent me if you wish. Scream at me, strike me, I will take it all. We are married, he said, his hand brushing her cheek. Disagreements are part of marriage. Don't let your emotions cloud the truth. And what truth is that? Chloe asked, her voice shaking. That when we first met, it was the glint of gold that caught your eye, not me. That you only intended to use my father, who thanked you endlessly. Or that my own husband, who claimed to believe in my innocence, let me stand trial in that chilling courtroom? Her tears flowed as she turned away. No, Chloe. None of that matters. The truth is, I love you, Damien said, locking eyes with her. Chloe, her hand tightly gripping the documents, let them slip to the floor. Did you kill His Majesty too? She asked quietly. I did, Damien confessed. He protected his twisted son, and I couldn't let a man like that rule this nation. If my son were like that, I'd have executed him myself to save his honor. Better to die with dignity than live in shame, he said coldly. Enough. Chloe cried, slapping his hand away. Chloe, he called out, noticing her trembling. Chloe's vision blurred as she felt a sharp pain. Blood began to run down her legs. Chloe! Damien shouted, rushing to her as she collapsed. He caught her, but the bleeding wouldn't stop. As she lost consciousness, Damien's voice grew frantic. Chloe! The baby is unharmed, but it would be best for her ladyship to rest fully for the time being the doctor said as she finished attending to Chloe in her room. Duke Damien remained seated beside her as the doctor quietly left. Chloe lay still, her back turned against him. Your grace, she called softly. Yes? He replied. You must have pressing matters to attend to. Perhaps you should return to Swain, she suggested. There is no task so important that I would abandon my ailing wife, Damien replied firmly. I wish to be alone. Please leave she said calmly. If you want to spare this bed from being stained with blood again. Ever since it became clear that your pregnancy was affecting your health, I found no joy in the life growing inside you, Damien said coldly. Damien, Chloe whispered, clutching her stomach. Please leave at once, she insisted. As you wish. Rest well, he replied before leaving the room. The moment the door closed, Chloe began to sob. Everything unfolded according to his plan. He's a calculating man. He must have known how far I'd go for those I love, she thought, tears streaming down her face. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, my baby. I'll protect you, she cried, her voice trembling. Outside, Damien stood silently, listening to her sobs. He must have known I'd find strength for their sake. But I'll keep you safe, my little one. I promise, Chloe whispered through her tears, clutching her belly. The spread of the epidemic from the South is quite concerning. How unsettling that such an event should occur so soon after the King's funeral, Lord Weiss remarked as he stood in Duke Damien's study. Indeed. Is there an update on Johannes? Duke Damien asked, still writing at his desk. Despite the chaos, he was determined to proceed with the coronation ceremony as quickly as possible. Johannes was resolute about moving forward, but when his attendant collapsed from the disease right before him, he fled to his villa on the outskirts of the capital, Lord Weiss replied. There are also rumors that the prince has aligned himself with the Duchy of Carter. If he seeks their support to strengthen his claim to the throne, it could complicate matters. Damien continued writing, though the weight of the conversation hung heavily. Your Grace, Lord Weiss asked cautiously, is your hesitation to act because of the Duchess? He studied Damien closely. The Duke paused. There has only ever been one reason for my hesitation. You value family above all else, and I do not want you to see me as a man who murders his own kin, 
he thought silently. But the time for restraint had passed. Let us prepare to rid ourselves of Johannes, Damien finally said. Are you certain, Your Grace? Lord Weiss asked. If you would prefer not to act directly, I could. No. Damien cut him off, rising from his seat. I will end his life myself. It's the last courtesy I owe to my cousin. He glanced at Weiss. So that you must admit to yourself that you love the kind of man I am, he thought, his mind thinking of Chloe. Later, Duke Damien hosted his vassals at the Thys estate. I am honored you have stayed so late, your grace, Lord Weiss remarked, observing Chloe nearby. The honor is mine, she replied softly. Once his grace departs, he will be absent for a while. As Duchess, it is my duty to remain by his side while he's still here. I know how much his grace cares for you. I'm sure he will conclude his business in Swain swiftly and return without delay. In the meantime, focus on your health, not your concerns, Lord Weiss said, smiling. Concerned? His grace always executes his plans with impeccable precision. I have no reason to be concerned, Chloe responded, forcing a smile. Damien smirked, his gaze steady. It seems the woman who has become the most unpredictable factor in my life holds me in rather high esteem. You flatter me, Chloe said, her voice calm but strained, prompting Lord Weiss to cast an awkward glance between them. In any case, Lord Weiss interjected, trying to shift the mood, his grace's child will grow up in a world vastly different from our own, wouldn't you agree? He asked his neighbor. I'm already looking forward to it, the man beside him replied. That sentiment holds true for all of us, doesn't it? We've all been waiting for the change. It will have been worth the wait, Duke Damien said, raising his glass. Chloe watched him thoughtfully. Not everyone desires change. Some are perfectly content with the world as it is, she remarked quietly. Even if that change is for the better? Damien asked, his gaze turning to her. And who decides what better means? Chloe countered, meeting his eyes, though she felt a wave of dizziness creeping in. Damien studied her. Chloe? Are you all right? He asked. She tried to rise, feeling faint. My apologies, but I must take my leave. Her words faltered as she collapsed to the floor. Damien rushed to her, catching her just in time. Chloe? What's wrong? Answer me. He shouted, panic in his voice as he held her limp body. Chloe was laid in her room, unconscious, while the doctor examined her. Duke Damien remained by her side, refusing to leave. At present, there's no definitive cure for the disease, the doctor explained cautiously. We must pray that her grace can fight it off. Were there not reports that a certain drug could alleviate the symptoms? Duke Damien asked urgently. When her grace briefly regained consciousness, she was adamant that no drug be administered that could harm the child, the doctor said. Treatments effective against this illness during pregnancy pose a significant risk of miscarriage. Her grace, being knowledgeable in medicine, was fully aware of this risk. I cannot administer any treatment she refuses. Damien's mother, standing nearby, looked horrified. Damien, can't you see? Chloe values the life of the child within her more than her own. Do you still not understand that? I have no intention of losing my wife over this, Damien growled his voice tight with frustration. And I know that my child is not so fragile. Bring me the medicine immediately, he ordered, holding Chloe's hand in anger. Late at night, Chloe stirred awake. Damien, she called softly, waking him as he rested his head beside her. How are you feeling? He asked, his voice tender as he gently squeezed her hand and caressed her face. I had a dream about my mother, she began. Until now, I had only heard her voice. But this time, I saw her. She gave me a handful of forget-me-nots, just like she used to when I was a child. The petals were blue, like your eyes, Chloe added, her gaze soft as she held his face. I wonder if our child's eyes will be like yours or mine. Perhaps my mother was trying to tell me. Damien smiled faintly but remained focused. You need to recover first, Chloe. Let's not rush ahead, he said, handing her a cup of medicine. What is this? Chloe asked, frowning slightly. You need to drink it, he replied, calm but firm. Chloe hesitated, feeling lightheaded. No, she said quietly. I won't. I don't want to force you, Chloe, Damien said, his voice tightening with concern. 
but if you refuse again, I'll have no choice. I won't take anything that could harm our baby, Chloe insisted, her voice resolute. Damien sighed, steadying his emotions. If you don't take it, you will die, Chloe. How dare you? Chloe snapped, her eyes blazing with anger. How dare you force this poison down my throat? Poison that could kill our child. There's no guarantee the child will die from this. Many women have taken the drug and still carried to term. But you must live, so our child has a chance, he pleaded, gripping her shoulders. Trust me. A child of this won't die so easily. Tears welled in Chloe's eyes, but before she could protest, Damien poured the medicine into his mouth and kissed her, ensuring she swallowed. I've never failed, and I won't now, he thought to himself, determined. I'll shoulder your sorrow and bring you happiness again. But first, you must live. One morning, Lady Thys inquired about Chloe's condition. How is she? She asked Margaret as they walked through the hallway. Since she woke up, she's been working on her embroidery, Margaret replied, her tone cautious. It's the only way she knows to distract herself, Lady Thys remarked. She's so composed. It's almost unsettling, Margaret added, causing Lady Thys to pause in thought. Her calm exterior is only a mask, Lady Thys murmured. How could she possibly forget the pain of losing her child? I can only pray the Lord grants Chloe and Damien one more chance. Meanwhile, Chloe stood at the window, staring at the falling snow, lost in thought. Chloe, Duke Damien's voice broke the silence as he embraced her from behind. Once you've recovered, we should depart for Swain together. Chloe didn't turn to face him. It was the dead of winter when I first arrived here, she said quietly and it seems it will once again be winter as I leave. I will forever remember this place for its chill. Damien tensed. You've lived through all four seasons here, but it seems winter has left the deepest impression, he noted, his voice tight. Indeed, Chloe responded with a faint smile. It felt interminable. Swain's winters aren't as harsh, he said, trying to offer comfort. The warmer climate should lift your spirits. Chloe was silent for a moment. Then, with a calmness that belied the weight of her words, she spoke. When we arrive in Swain, I intend to file for divorce. Damien froze, his hands slipping from her shoulders. What? He asked, his voice barely audible, shock evident in his eyes. I'm asking for a divorce, your grace, Chloe said, her voice steady but cold. The room fell into a heavy silence, the quiet snowfall outside only amplifying the tension between them. What gives you the right to bring up divorce? Damien asked, his voice low but sharp. I remember you telling me we would have only one child, Chloe replied, her tone controlled but distant. You said no more children would come to us. Now that you have no heir, I assumed you would want a divorce. Chloe von Thys, Duke Damien said, his eyes cold. Don't call me that. Chloe shouted, her voice breaking. You deceived me, pushed me to the brink, and made me risk our child's life. I should never have taken that medicine, she sobbed, burying her face in her hands as her walking cane clattered to the floor. Chloe. Damien's voice softened, but his words were firm. If you hadn't taken the medicine, you wouldn't have survived. Then you should have let me die. She cried, her tears flowing freely. My child was the only real thing I had in this place full of lies. I did it to save your life because I love you, he said quietly, his hand resting on her shoulder. After everything I've done to keep you by my side, you can't leave me now. Chloe looked at him in shock. You have no right to speak of love. No, he countered, his voice steady, his hand now at her neck. You have no right to assume what I feel. This is my way of loving you, Chloe Vaughn Thys. I've never wanted a love like this, she said, her voice shaking. Are you sure? he asked, his gaze intense. Can you truly say I don't occupy your mind and soul? You did, Chloe admitted, her voice cold, until the night I discovered your secrets. Don't be ridiculous, Chloe, he said dismissively. Those documents were nothing. If they were truly important, I would have burned them the moment you told me you loved me. I should never have left you alone here. What a fool I was, he muttered, leaning his head against her shoulder. I made mistakes, Chloe. But I love you. He pulled her closer, and they kissed. When they broke apart, his voice was resolute. Divorce will never be part of my life. And it won't be part of yours either. 
I know you love me, he tells her. Yes, Chloe whispered, her voice heavy with regret. All of this happened because I loved you, and I regret it deeply, she said, tears filling her eyes. No, Chloe, you will not regret it. I will make sure of that, Damien said, his voice unwavering as he held her gaze. Moments later, they were lost in each other, Damien kneeling before her, planting soft kisses as Chloe's face flushed with warmth. Chloe, you're the only woman who can bring me to my knees, he murmured, pausing for a breath. Chloe's mind swirled as their lips met again, but her thoughts lingered in conflict. I once said with certainty that if I cannot forgive, I cannot love. But what am I to do when I find myself unable to forgive someone I've already fallen for? If love and hatred can't coexist, then what am I supposed to do? Their passionate moment was abruptly interrupted by the sound of hurried footsteps. My lord. The butler burst into the room, voice breathless. An urgent message has arrived. The citizens of Swain have started a rebellion, and Prince Johannes's whereabouts are unknown. Damien pulled away from Chloe, his expression hardening. I must leave for Swain at once. You are to stay here and protect the Duchess until I return, he ordered, standing to face the butler. Yes, my lord, the butler responded quickly. Chloe grabbed Damien's hand, her voice trembling with desperation. Please, let me come with you. I don't want to be left here alone amidst this turmoil. No, Damien said sharply, pulling his hand away. It wouldn't be fitting for the future queen to be seen with divorce papers in hand. I will do no such thing, Chloe replied, her voice calm but pained. Without responding, Damien turned to the butler. Tell the staff that until I give express permission, the Duchess is not to leave this castle. He threw his cloak over his shoulders and left the room without another glance, leaving Chloe standing there, tears silently streaming down her face as she watched him go. Two men conversed in the streets of Thys. I heard Duke Thys quelled the rebellion as soon as he reached Swain. With the prince missing, it seems likely the Duke will take the throne, one man said. The other nodded. That would be ideal. He's known for mingling with commoners and even married a woman from a low-ranking noble family. The first man added, he might be the only one who can fix this broken system. The Duchess is very fortunate. The second man agreed. Indeed, going from a humble noble's daughter to queen is enviable. She must have been truly blessed to have such fortune, the first man concluded. Meanwhile, Margaret and Chloe strolled through the woods. Are you not cold, my lady? Margaret asked. The fresh air is nice. I was getting tired of being indoors. Thank you for suggesting this walk, Margaret. You're such a kind person, Chloe replied, making Margaret blush. I'm only trying to be better because you are my lady, Margaret said softly as they continued walking. You haven't given up on becoming an actress once we move to Swain, have you? Chloe asked. Margaret hesitated. Do you really think someone as shy as me could do that? Chloe smiled. Absolutely. The day you take the stage, I'll be in the front row cheering for you. She brushed a strand of Margaret's hair aside, her eyes warm. My lady. Margaret's voice trembled. Don't cry, Chloe reassured her with a smile. Actually, I had another reason for suggesting this walk, Margaret said, wiping her eyes. Oh? What's that? Chloe paused. You have a visitor. I thought it might lift your spirits. Chloe turned to see who it was, her eyes widening. Gillis, she said, looking shocked. They made their way to Gillis' former cottage. You look quite distinguished, Gillis, like a clergyman from distant lands, Chloe remarked, commenting on his attire. Gillis rubbed his head. The monk's robe doesn't quite suit me, does it? No, it suits you nicely. I mean it, she replied with a soft smile. Margaret told me how you've been faring, Gillis said scratching his head slightly. I'm all right, Gillis. You must have been worried, Chloe reassured him, her expression calm. My lady, do you know why I helped Lady Alice escape? He asked, fidgeting with his fingers. I imagine it was because she begged you with tear-filled eyes? Chloe guessed. Lady Alice said, what am I to do, Gillis? I want to be happy, he recalled, his voice filled with the memory of her pleading. Chloe nodded knowingly. That does sound like something she would say. Gillis clenched his fists, his face growing serious. Lady Chloe, I can offer the same to you. He hesitated, then continued, 
I've thought about it for a long time. If you were content here, I would have stayed silent until the day I die. But, he faltered before Chloe gently interrupted. You've come to realize something, she said, her eyes steady. The Duke of Thys had a scheme in mind when he approached you. You've no idea the method he used to get you. Gillis, there is no secret in the world that can be hidden forever, Chloe called softly, halting his speech. Gillis stared at her, perplexed. My lady, did you already know? Did you forgive him, even knowing the truth? He asked, his voice filled with awe. Chloe sighed. I loathed him so intensely that it was almost unbearable. But strangely, I felt no resentment toward our child. As much as I despised the name, I found myself wishing to give our child the name of House This. Her voice was measured, reflecting on the past. I must be as worldly as the next person, she added quietly. Please don't say such things. You merely wanted what was best for your child, Gillis said, trembling slightly, his hands clenched in frustration. Yes, though none of it matters now, Chloe said softly. Gillis suddenly stood, walking toward her. Lady Chloe, if you wish, I can free you from this endless winter. Please, run away with me, he pleaded, his voice filled with urgency as he knelt before her. I came here to say this, even knowing the Duke might kill me for it. And I am aware that someone with origins as humble as mine has no right to harbor such feelings, Gillis said, his voice heavy, as tears welled in his eyes. Chloe looked at him with calm understanding. Yet, seeing your profound unhappiness makes me feel as though I am withering away, Gillis continued, his emotion palpable. Please, please run away with me, he begged, tears falling. Gillis, thank you, Chloe said softly, wiping away his tears as she knelt beside him. You risked your life to come here and ask me to leave with you. This moment, this gesture of risking everything to confess your love. The romance of this gesture, I'll never forget it. She smiled gently. But your face is ice cold. Let me make you some tea, she said, standing up. Before she could move, Gillis reached out, gently holding her back. Will I never be worthy of you? He asked, his voice trembling, his head bowed in despair. Chloe knelt again and took his hand. Gillis, listen to me. If I relied on your kindness now, I would spend the rest of my life consumed by guilt. And you, Gillis, would never find true happiness. You're not the kind of man who holds someone by force. You're the type who would rather preserve someone's world than destroy it, she said, letting go of his hand as his eyes filled with emotion. Gillis sighed, the tension easing from his face. There's no arguing with you, Lady Chloe. You didn't even try, Chloe teased with a laugh, making Gillis smile as he sniffled. Please, promise me one thing, my lady. Promise me you'll be happy, Gillis asked, his voice soft but pleading. I will, Gillis. And remember this, whatever choice I make it will be mine of my own volition, she replied, smiling warmly. I'll remember, he said, his gaze lingering on her as if trying to hold on to the moment. As Gillis left the cottage, Chloe's words echoed in his mind. Gillis, I will find happiness. Later, in her study, Chloe penned a letter. This truly is the end. My dearest Lord Duke, I have had ample time to reflect during your absence. I now realize how childishly stubborn I've been, allowing my grief to overshadow you. At the busy train station, Duke Damien noticed a familiar face in the crowd. Isn't that Eliza? He thought, noting how well she seemed to be doing. Reaching into his pocket, he pulled out Chloe's letter. Chloe will be pleased to hear the news, he thought, holding the letter close. Though I know my concern is unwarranted, I felt compelled to pick up my pen out of fear that your goals would be compromised because of me. I hope that you will successfully settle all matters and allow me to join you by your side soon. You are the sole person who can validate me. I love you, Damien. I pray that I have not become your source of weakness. Eagerly awaiting the world you will shape, Chloe, Duke Damien read, finishing the letter. He stood for a moment, holding the paper as if absorbing its weight. Yes, Chloe, he thought, a rare softness in his expression. It does not matter whether you are being sincere or if this is deception. You will always be the only one for me, the sovereign of this nation. And I, too, will be the only one for you. We can now be happy, free of all worry. That is enough. So, Chloe, we can start afresh now, he mused feeling a sense of certainty as he made his way to his estate. But tragedy struck elsewhere. 
A sudden fire had broken out at the cottage where Chloe stayed in the woods. Hurry, everyone! You must hurry! Slaves shouted, rushing with buckets of water in a desperate attempt to douse the flames. The fire raged fiercely, uncontrollable despite their efforts. Duke Damien arrived, walking steadily, his face stern as the chaos unfolded. What is happening? He demanded, his voice sharp with anger. My lord, the cottage caught fire, a trembling maid stammered, her face pale. And her grace. She is still inside. Damien's steps faltered. The words sank in slowly, painfully. Chloe? He asked, his voice cracking, his eyes fixed on the burning cottage, the terror beginning to take hold. Damien stood at the edge of the chaos, the flames consuming the cabin. Servants held him back, their voices pleading, My lord, you mustn't go in. But their words were lost on him as he fought to break free, his heart pounding with each shout of Chloe's name. Let go of me, he yelled, shaking them off before rushing towards the inferno. Chloe, his voice cut through the roar of the flames. Entering the burning structure, the heat wrapped around him, but he didn't care. His eyes scanned the room frantically until they landed on her still form. His breath caught in his throat. What are you doing? His voice trembled as he approached her. Chloe, it's time to get up. Aren't you going to welcome me with open arms? Isn't that your duty as my wife? We have so much to discuss. You can't leave me like this. The rain came suddenly, drenching the scene, quelling the flames. But Damien barely noticed, cradling Chloe's lifeless body in his arms, his tears mingling with the downpour. You promised, Chloe. You belong to me, forever. A soft voice interrupted him. Damien, his mother stood at the doorway, shielding her face from the stench of burnt wood and flesh. Her eyes widened when she saw him holding Chloe. Oh, Chloe, her voice broke with grief. Why are you calling for my wife, mother? Damien's voice was distant, hollow. She would never die like this. Not Chloe. Not the Duchess of Thys. A weak smile tugged at his lips, but his tears betrayed him. The servants wept quietly, their sorrow palpable. Damien's scream of anguish pierced the air, but then there was only silence. Later in his room, Damien sat slumped in his chair, staring at their portrait, the weight of her absence crushing him. You can't escape me, Chloe. Not even in death. I won't let you. His mother entered quietly, holding a telegram. Damien, a message from Verdia. The Viscount has fallen ill. Will he miss the funeral then? Damien asked flatly, not looking up. My dear, should we not lay Chloe to rest in her birthplace as a final act of love? His mother suggested gently. What do you mean mother? His voice tightened. She is a queen. She belongs in the royal crypt. He stood, his expression a mixture of sorrow and determination. The queen's funeral will take place after the coronation. I'll return to Swain. See to things here, and then join me. As he left the room, his mother lingered, her eyes drawn to the portrait of Chloe, her heart heavy with grief, but knowing Damien's pain ran deeper than any words could heal. She stood before the fireplace, the memory of her conversation with Chloe fresh in her mind. Chloe, did it not hurt when Damien gripped your hand so tightly? She had asked her once. Chloe had looked at her with a soft, sad smile. Yes, mother. That is why I let go of his hand. At the bustling Thys station, the day of the fire. The station was alive with chaos, travelers rushing to catch the departing train, their movements hurried and frantic. Winesbury, the train to Winesbury is about to depart. A coachman called out, his voice rising above the clamor of the crowd. People surged forward, pushing and shoving to secure their place. Stop pushing. You nearly knocked over an old woman. Eliza scolded, her sharp voice cutting through the commotion as she helped guide someone cloaked in mystery toward the train. Are you all right? It's far too crowded here, Eliza asked, concern in her voice. I'm fine, thank you for your help, Eliza, came the reply, and as the cloak slipped back, Chloe's face was revealed. Eliza's expression softened. It's nothing compared to the kindness you've shown me, my lady. I don't know how much help I can be, but if you ever need assistance, Please write to me, she said, holding Chloe's hands with affection and a touch of worry. The final call for Winesbury echoed through the air as the train prepared to leave. You must board now, Eliza urged. 
Chloe hesitated for a moment, her gaze distant as though she were addressing someone far away. Damien, you lost. I hope you like my gift. In the perfect world you are building, my absence, as imperfect as I am, won't matter, she thought, her heart heavy but resolute. Without another word, she turned and boarded the train, leaving Thys behind. The station faded into the distance, and with it, Chloe's connection to the world she had once known. The tumultuous spring passed, and summer arrived. Damien Ernst von Thys took a solemn oath before God, pledging his life to the prosperity of Swanton. At the same time, a substantial reward was offered for the capture of Prince Johannes, who had fled the kingdom. Thus began the reign of the Thys dynasty. Do you think Johannes has sought refuge in the Duchy of Carter? Lord Weiss asked, seated across from Damien in the royal library as they flipped through books. Yes, undoubtedly. He wouldn't have been able to escape on his own, Damien replied quietly, his gaze downcast. They say the new king of Carter is completely mad. Apparently, he shot one of his own men just for insulting his lover. If someone like that decides to align with Johannes, Weiss trailed off. If he's mad, we can only hope he's a fool too. Otherwise, Damien smirked, his eyes distant. We'll have a war on our hands. Weiss watched him in disbelief. How can he speak so lightly of such things? He thought. Then, gathering his resolve, he asked, If I may, when do you plan to hold Her Majesty's funeral? Two months have passed. Surely, you know the palace is filled with prying eyes. Damien paused his writing but did not turn. After a moment, he rose and walked toward the window. What makes you think I don't enjoy sleeping next to a coffin? He said, his back to Weiss. Your Majesty, Weiss hesitated, but his tone was firm. That's no jest. I cannot serve a mad king. Damien's gaze remained fixed on the window. If you don't wish to witness true madness, then I suggest you leave me, he said quietly. Weiss remained seated, his voice calm. Damien, you know better than anyone that your current state is far from normal. Please, act like yourself. Like a this. But Damien remained silent, staring out into the distance, lost in a world only he could see. The funeral will be held in ten days, Damien said, facing Lord Weiss, ending the conversation. Ten days later, Chloe's body was laid to rest in the royal garden. From the castle window, Duke Damien watched the grave, rain pouring down outside, shrouding the night in gloom. Here lies Chloe, beloved of Damien, he thought bitterly. How do you feel, being buried in the very place where you promised to do anything for me? Do you consider it an insult? Are you angry with me? His mind replayed memories of her, vivid and piercing. You would have looked beautiful even while admonishing me. If only I had brought you with me to Swain. If only I hadn't left you alone in this. If only I had realized my feelings sooner and proposed. His thoughts grew darker. Then maybe instead of this urge to slit my own throat in defeat, I could be kissing your delicate neck, indulging in bliss. A gentle knock interrupted his brooding. Your Majesty, his steward called. What is it? Damien asked, his voice dull. A delivery from the Thys post office, the steward said as he entered. Their stamps that her ladyship, her majesty, personally commissioned before the accident. Damien looked stunned but quickly regained composure. I see. You may leave. He opened the envelope slowly, revealing its contents, a postcard with a picture of them together. His heart clenched as memories of that day flooded back, the day he had gotten soaked in the rain because of a postcard. In a fit of anguish, Damien hurled the cup in his hand to the floor, shattering it. He dropped to his knees beside the broken glass, his hand bleeding as he gripped a shard tightly. Chloe, if I were to die, would I be reunited with you? He whispered, clutching the glass. What a morbid joke, Damien, a voice said softly, as a figure gently took the shard from his hand. That wasn't a joke, he replied, his eyes wide as he stared at what seemed to be Chloe's ghost before him. You know, Damien, the river of death splits into heaven and hell. Surely the Lord would not send us both to the same place. Do you agree? Her voice echoed before fading into the night. Damien sat in silence, his hands covering his face as sobs racked his body. Thank you for joining us on this incredible adventure. If you enjoyed what you watched, please consider liking, subscribing, and ringing that notification bell. 
Your comments mean the world to us and help us improve. The next episode promises even more excitement and unexpected twists so stay tuned as we embark on this thrilling journey together. Keep the anticipation alive and we'll catch you in the next episode.